Hey everybody, I'm here today to talk about Microtic. It's been, uh, I've been doing this research for a bit more than two years. So it's a Latvian company um, and, and they make uh, routers kind of like uh, this one over here. This is the smallest one they make um, and I've been hacking them. Um, so this is an overview. I've, I've spent quite some time. I returned to the topic after, after break uh, because I noticed that this year Hackers, including some Russian hackers, um, have been using my research and research of uh, of some of our um, other people that do security research into Microtic for for some bad things. So I wanted to take a look at what's happening, what has happened, what have other people found. Also present some new findings that I made um, at the second part of this year. Um, me myself, I work at a company called Possible Security. We're a small company back in Latvia. Uh, we hack and break things. We also do consulting. And uh, my research, my public research is all over there, so you can take a look. Uh, it's uh, mostly in English, some, some Latvian. And do follow me on Twitter. I also tweet in English. You can, you can follow new developments or for whatever we do. Um, also, some things that I do both in the company and, and outside. I spend quite a lot of time working uh, well, having fun, having some hobbies. So, network flow analysis is where I came from when I started. When I started doing um, security research, that's where where I come from. I also do reverse engineering, which is of course integral for doing research like this, and social engineering as well. So, if you want to have some fun, we can we can we can talk, we can play a game afterwards after the presentation. And legal dimension. Um, I'm I'm going into that boring boring uh, boring topic, right, uh, where, where the non-technical guys go, because uh, I find it, it fun. After you spend some time doing technical stuff, you want to do something, something non-technical. So, a little bit about what this router is. is. Um, so, statistics show that it's not too popular in France. Is there anyone at all in the room that has heard or, or worked with router OS? Oh, okay, unexpected. So, we have five, five hands, six hands up. Um, okay, so, it has Linux running underneath whatever they made um, and the Linux is old. It's real, really old Linux. So if you install the current version, real, one really good thing about them is updates. They push updates as soon as vulnerability is discovered. Um, one talk that I, that I did a bit more than a year ago at the conference in the Netherlands, I actually had to notify them just after my presentation because otherwise I couldn't have done the live demo on their website because they fix bugs like that. Um, so, but anyway, um, the bad thing is they use a really old Linux kernel. This is what they use, 335. It's still there. That's that's what they're based on. Uh, as you can see, it's been uh, it's been out since 2012. Um, it consists of some startup scripts. Um, it also has. Uh, Nova binaries. This is their intellectual property. So even though Linux, you know, if you use Linux as a company, you have to GPL it, uh, your your product. Uh, they worked around that by having separate Nova binaries. I think that's kind of legal, uh, probably. Um, so those are theirs. Everything else is open source. You can request the source for that. But that's the magic. That's where the business happens. Uh, and some configuration files. It also has that, of course. So and it's also a closed source and closed ecosystem, of course. Um, and because of that, well, all we the only thing we can do is reverse engineer it because we can't really get into it any other way. Uh, so you probably have to ask, is it popular, right? Because we're in France and we don't have that many users in France. Um, here, here are top 10 countries uh, or, or, or top nine countries here. Uh, we can see that uh, Brazil, Indonesia, China is it is quite popular over there. Um, so it's, uh, you know, they have good products, but they work for the, um, well, third world countries, low income markets. Let's call it like that, um, because because they're cheaper, right? Um, so we also have some devices in France. This is data from uh, second part of this year. Oh, hello there. Um, <laughs> data from the second part of this year. Part of this year, and uh, these are devices that could be found on Shodan. So, of course, each country uses more devices than what we see here. Um, so this is simply uh, the publicly visible devices, and by default, they come without any ports open to the internet. So in order for you to be hackable from the internet, you have to deliberately open up some ports. That's, by the way, so um, let me just show you a quick demo because uh, we're gonna hack it later on so you see how it looks normally before it's hacked. Um, so, okay, I think you should be seeing that there. So we have uh, a router here, it's connected. It's uh, one, of, one of the medium size. They also do these rack ones. We're gonna connect to it. Um, 
on his username admin. And there we go. So this is what we get. We also get the web interface, some other stuff, but but this is basically what we have. Um, we you know we, we can't do anything like that. It's a different shell. It's a router shell. We can we can see some commands, right? We can go to interfaces. We can take a look at the interface configurations. You know, it's it's like uh, Cisco IIS, but it's 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 well, I find it better. It's it has more features and it has a tons of features. But I'm not here to to you know talk about the features. But it does have a ton of them, right? So that's where we are. Uh, we can't really get to any file system. Talking about files, we can do file print, right? This is some files that we have there, but uh, we we don't really we don't really see much of there. So um, let's quit out from here and continue with this. So um, it has quite a large ecosystem. Um, so I pinpointed different components of router OS. And uh, well, yeah, not going through all of that, there are multiple entry points. Um, and the possible access vectors are marked uh, in, in color red or more like orange here. And um, some of the places where we've seen exploits recently are, are marked here. We've seen exploits for uh, the web interface, for example, and I'm going to show you one. Uh, it's nothing new. It's been around um, for quite some, time, quite some time. It's actually uh, leaked from the CIA um, or NSA, was it? I mix those two up all the time. Uh, so um, I think it was CIA, CIA Vault 7 leaks. Uh, right, right. Um, and uh, so, so yes, yes, that's, that's quite an old one. They had it for quite some time, but the world has had it for a couple of years, at least the information. Um, I, I coded it up, I didn't publish it. Uh, another guy from Italy or Spain, I think it's Spain, um, coded it up and decided to publish it. So now we have hackers everywhere, um, bad hackers, I mean. So Winbox, uh, we also have that. That's a separate protocol, Samba, right? Uh, port um, uh, 139 uh, or 445, where we have our files. And we have other demos not listed here. They have a lot of these proprietary binaries running there. Um, and we have seen exploits for some other as well. Uh, we're going to go through these vulnerabilities here. Um, so these are. These are, you know, the foundational ones, the ones that are either really recent or the ones that um, well have left their mark um, in 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 router OS. So the first one is this. Anyone recognize that string? Probably only people who have worked with with it deeply. No one recognizes that string. That string. So um, that is the string used by them to encrypt passwords on the device. Here's the algorithm um, to encrypt and of course also decrypt passwords because we have XOR uh, over here. So that's basically all we have. Um, so some guy decided uh, probably 20 years ago when coding it up just to mash the keyboard. If you look at it, right, it's you know, mostly numbers, some some letters. If you, if you do a heat map of that, you actually can see two hands being dumped on the <laughs> keyboard, keyboard, yeah. keyboard. Yeah. Anyway, um, so this is how they do it. This is how they protect the user's password, um, and and it's uh, often used in attacks. It's often used in attacks when uh, attacker gains code execution, but they want normal access, so they just dump the configuration and use this algorithm to get the password. Um, Chimai Red. This is an authenticated remote code execution. Uh, this is the one in CIA Vault Seven. Um, that was found. So um, I actually managed to make it better than the one leaked, the, the documentation leaked from the CIA. Uh, it, it supports more versions, hey. Um, so uh, it's stack clashing by setting large content length. It's, um, it, it, it is meant for the web server. Uh, so there's this, uh, we can take a look at the deeper right now. There's this function, read post data, where the web server reads the data being sent through HTTP post request. Um, and it's been uh, fixed already. So the deal there is that we set a large content length, and that way we are able to write into a different, uh, different stack from a different process, from different thread. Um, so some code over here. So this is Nova bin dub 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 binary, and what what we can see here is um, content length header being read from the request, and it's being stored. And here we can see that content length header without any further checks or anything. Uh, so stack pointer is stack, stack pointer is decreased by the content length header. So we can you know move the stack pointer around. Uh, and to actually 
have this happening, and the CIA leaked documents were a huge help here. Um, to actually have this happening, we have to have two requests at the same time, right? Uh, one moves a stack pointer, and the other one provides the executable um, payload being launched. So that's how that's being done. Uh, let's see a demo. Anyone's, anyone has seen Chima Red in, in real life or on the internet? Nope? Okay. So, I mean, the demos here are not much fun because, you know, it just works always. Uh, right. Uh, so, to do... Um, so, by the way, this device that I connected to is the newest one. So obviously, uh, most of the things, but not all of them, have been fixed in the newest version. Um, so I'll have to use um, an older version to be able to show you this demo here. Wow, this, this is really light. This router is super light. Okay. So, um, let's go to... Am I in the right folder even? Yeah, now I am. <laughs> Okay, um, so Chima Red, we have our, our device connected, of course, at the default address of uh, 192.168.8.8.1, oops, not that one, this one here, and uh, yeah, we do Python, Chima Red, Pi, and here's an usage, right? So, we type in the IP address, and... Uh, it will crash the web server and try to try to give us the username. So at first it tries x86. So of course uh, the execution depends, the ROP chain depends on the specific architecture. So it tries different architectures. So there we go. Now this is not too fun, right? Uh, let's just do a quickie here. Um, um, let's do it like this, right? Okay, I can launch it again. But anyway, as you see, it works, right? It does. Uh, it, it does what I described. It does stack clashing uh, for stability. Oh no! Um, so maybe the web server hasn't uh, hasn't recovered after our, our 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 nice previous attack. Well, that's sad. Um, there is there is a specific special. Uh, there is a special. Uh, them on running on device, recovering the services as they die. So maybe we are too fast. Um, in any case, so this just works. We get it out. Oh, there we go. Um, this is this is lame version of the exploit. That's why it's, we see multiple usernames uh, because RouterS does not delete the previous usernames and passwords from the file. Uh, even if you change your password, the old password is still there. There's an index file that says now you have to look there. And this exploit it's not by, it's not made by me. Uh, it does not look at at the index file, right? So we get everything. Okay, um, that's that. Let's move forward then for the next thing. So devil login based jailbreaks. Um, as you saw, this device is quite limited in what it can do. I mean, it has everything a, routering, a router might need, but if you want to, I don't know, install mm, torrent server on it or do something else, uh, well, we are limited in what we can do because we cannot execute code directly. Um, Luckily for us, since version 3, currently we are at version 6, um, and, and they're slow in updating major versions, the community has been asking them to go to version 7 for like five years, I think now, um, from version 6. So um, they've had it for quite some time. So um, there's this binary, Nova bin login, and this is the basic logic in there. I wrote it as a pseudocode kind of bash style thingy, but of course it's in assembly. Uh, so what it does, it checks if this file exists, and the username you supplied is devil, and the password equals the password of the user admin, and if that's the case, you get a shell instead of getting router OS. Um, so that's how it works. The only catch, of course, is getting that file to exist on the device. Uh, here's how it looks uh, from, from the view of radar, right? This is the uh, devil login, where it checks if the um, file exists, as we can see here. And uh, here's the second part, where it, uh, it calls devil login sub, and then uh, replaces your username devil with username admin to check the password. Um, I'm not going to show that because we have a newer version of jailbreak to um, see today. Uh, then we have Samba attack. So this is 2018. It's an unauthenticated remote code execution and it's done via heap buffer overflow when we send the long NetBIOS name uh, in NetBIOS session request messages. Um, 
vulnerable function is Samba remove directory, SMB RMD in their custom binary, Nova bin Samba. This has also been fixed. Um, here it is. <clears throat> here we can see it being read. And here we can see it being um, copied directly over there where we can jump later on. The problem is, of course, that it's not executable, but we can do some rob chaining and, and execute it. Um, then we have Winbox. Uh, Winbox is a special protocol that they use um, to allow people without command line knowledge and with dislike for web interfaces to admi administer the devices. It's basically a Windows executable that uses custom port and custom protocol to communicate with the device. And uh, so fun thing about Winbox is that in order for it to be as versatile as possible, what they do is the router sends DLL files to your Winbox when you first connect. You know, it depends on the router version, you get the right DLL files and you can get uh, the magic code flowing on your Windows machine. Um, this is, of course, super unsafe by itself, and that part, I think, hasn't been yet resolved, right? You can create a malicious router and just inject DLL files into some guy's computer. Um, but this is a different one. So here we abuse the same functionality for DLL downloads, but um, they don't really check correctly what is that you're downloading. So it's possible to do a file read, and it was shown later that it's also possible to do different functions, like file write. Um, to access some different files, like for example, the files that store your heavily encrypted username and password. Um, here it is, right? It bases in it bases itself in Home Web Winbox, but there are no but there are no legitimate checks that actually uh, try to prevent you from going out of that root, out of Home Web Winbox. Uh, let's do a Winbox demo um, again on the older router here. So, this is Winbox here, once again, not written by me. Uh, for Winbox, uh, I didn't even do that much uh, stuff myself. So, Python 3, Winbox exploit, and uh, it asks for an IP address. Ah, there we go. This is faster because we don't need to do any, any magical stack clashing. We just request a function that's not protected by the password because the LL files need to be downloaded well, they don't need to, but I mean, those guys think that they need to be downloaded before the password is verified, and we ask to download some other password. And once again, we only download one file, not the index file, so we get extra users like with the old passwords. So that's easy and nice. You can like run it in a row. It it yeah, it just just works. So imagine how happy are the black hats online that try to exploit this. Um, right then. Relatively new thing. It's been it's been released a couple of months ago, I think only. Um, there's also an authenticator remote code execution, right? So you need a password, but that's still maybe fun for some. Um, so <clears throat> you can do a stack buffer overflow using guestprintf, which is a great function to use if you code C. Um, it's in the license upgrade binary. It's used to do licensing. So if you buy a physical device, uh, you get the license, and mostly it hmm, it's rebooted, huh? Too many, too much exploits. Um, mostly, it just works. So you don't you don't need to do anything with license. But they also sell licenses, right? For x86, for example, you can install it on your home machine or, or in the cloud, and then license upgrade is what they use. Uh, so for license upgrade, uh, here's this great string that connects to their server to to check if the key that you entered is 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 correct, right? And well, it calls as printf, so you know. Oh right, and this is this is the checks that they do basically on on your on your data. So nothing much, right? You can still put a lot of stuff in there, right? They prevented some attacks, but they think about uh, overflowing the buffer, right? Because that's the only check that they do on the data you give in. Okay, now finally the third exploit. Uh, oh, sorry, the final exploit is uh, this one I wrote in October. Um, it's uh, it's a new jailbreak, so they fixed this devil login finally after I don't know how many years, maybe ten, uh, and now you actually don't the devil login file does nothing. It's, it's it was actually an um, Rembrandt of the old era, right? Because uh, they've had this package option thing for 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 a long time. So what they now need you to do is actually install a package. It's actually expandable, so you can download packages like for, uh, there's Kalea, which is um, stuff that US uses, uh, law enforcement in US used to 
uh, listen in to conversations legally. Uh, you can download that package, for example, and install, or you can download Duet package, which, which is uh, another management interface, right? So there's this option package which you cannot download, and all of those are signed, so you can't really make your own, uh, at least recently when they fixed the checksum checking and, and, and signature checking. Um, uh, so, yeah, package option. Uh, you need to have the package. And in the recent versions, what they've done is uh, they verified that it's so that it's not a link. So you could just create a file like similar to the previous exploits. Uh, but the problem is it checks that it's not a link, and it also verifies that the file system for that folder for that inode is SquashFS, which is a read-only file system. So um, you know we 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 don't have uh, we don't have much um, um, much of a leeway there. Uh, but uh, you know I. I thought about it a bit, and yeah, I, I thought this might work, right? So we just we just take an existing package that's already SquashFS and bind mount it to the option package, and yeah, it system sees it as SquashFS mount, so everything works. Um, that's great. That's how it works. Uh, now the question is, how do we make the router actually take that and? Uh, create that, because they've been fixing security quite a lot. Uh, another interesting thing I found is this uh, defconf file that they have. And uh, I mean, so they have a bunch of, a bunch of files that are being run when, when the system starts up. I took a look through them, and uh, this defconf file, well, this is what it has. I mean, it, it has more. But this, that's bash script, right? Uh, maybe I'll give you, I mean, so organizers told me that, that we have a hundred top French hackers here, so experienced audience. Uh, maybe I'll give you like a couple seconds, like 10, 20 seconds, uh, maybe you can find a problem uh, here in, in, in this slide. I mean, it's a lot of lines, yes, but... <laughs> so... <clears throat> yeah, what, what? Yeah? Yeah, DevCF, DevCF is here, great, yeah. And are we, of course, means that they intend this folder to be read-writable, and it is. You can actually write this file, and then you can, uh, then you can read the file, and finally, if you do evil, you can inject uh, some code there as well, which is what my jailbreak does. Uh, so I'm going to show you a demo of the jailbreak right now for the new version. But uh, for those of you who are interested in these devices, I mean, th those are quite cheap. They start at like twenty-five dollars. You can you can get them online just to play around. It's a fun device to to have uh, to hack as well. So um, you can use the new method for versions uh, that start at six four one and the old jailbreak of mine for versions before six four one. Uh, six four one I think works uh, both ways. Funnily enough, and. Uh, I'm really happy to say I was a bit afraid because because Microtic got informed about this jailbreak um, some time ago, so I was really afraid. But I'm happy to say that it still works with the current version today. Uh, so that's cool. I have it here, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. So I'm gonna plug in to uh, port. Right. So um, this jailbreak actually requires you to be able to write to this folder slash rv. How do you get to that folder if it's outside of this jail, right? I did, uh, I did print files earlier at the very beginning of the presentation, and we only saw a couple of files. You don't have access to the file system from there. Well, that's where this comes in, USB stick. Um, so I'm going to not put it there, I'm going to put it here in my laptop for now. And I will try not to overwrite my hard drive in the process. Because you now it's a hacker tool, it doesn't do much safety checks. Um, so, I have this make USB here. Right? Um, so it will make the magic USB that you can use for this uh, attack. Um, to be super sure, I'm going to do... Okay. I have to think now twice if 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 uh, I actually have my second hardware removed. Um.
Okay, it seems fair to say that's the flash. Um, so, <laughs> make USB dev SDB. Is that correct? Yeah, okay, okay. Right. So it does some DD, nothing magical. It basically, the, this, is, this is online, you can download those scripts right now. Um, so done. That is it. Uh, so now we have our magical flash, right? I could sell it for, I don't know, a <laughs> lot. You know those scammers that, that put Linux on, on a flash and then sell those for, for like $50? I could do the same. Uh, so um, this works for devices that have USB port or have some other way to attach a hard drive um, or a storage device. Um, so this one has USB port, so we're going to use that. Let's put it in. Okay, let's hope it's there. And now what we can do is simply launch the um, second stage. We type the IP address, the default IP address is already there. Um, the password, I don't know if I changed the password in this one, let's see. Let's hope I didn't, okay. Now let's see if it works. <coughs> oh, cool. Um, so yeah, it was the right password, mm, great. So what this version does and how it compares to previous versions is that it only gives you temporarily jailbreak, which is both bad and good. Good. I mean, for research, it's not that good, but for research, you can do other stuff. Um, for actually adding more features, that's great, because you have your temporal jailbreak, and jailbreak for any device always increases the attack surface. So it gives you temporarily jailbreak access. You can install any binaries you want. You can leave them there. You can configure, configure running scripts, and then you can get uh, your stuff back, right? And even during jailbreak, the real device will, be, will still be running. We will just get a nice shell. Uh, there we go. That's our shell. Um, that's the kernel, you know, uh, that we have. Uh, oh, yeah, it doesn't have LS, so that's a pity. Uh, we can do like echo star, I guess, or cat tab. <laughs> yeah, that also works. Um, so we go to Nova, we go to bin, and and these are these are their their custom custom binaries. And I think if it if I remember correctly, it was called info. Yeah, 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 we can do info system package print. So this is, uh, it allows you to run rotor S commands through the shell. That's one of the binaries they have. Um, as you can see, it's the latest version. And uh, yeah, there we go. We have jailbreak, we can do stuff uh, in there. And uh, it will be running in the jailbreak mode until we uh, reboot the system. But even before rebooting, we, we also have parallel access uh, to the actual non-jailbroken interface as well. So let me wrap this up now. <clears throat> Let's look at the status quo for a bit here. Um, currently this is, this this half of the year, this is the distribution of versions online. So uh, it's, I mean, it's better than Android, I guess, but worse than iOS if we compare it like that. Um, if we look at uh, if we look at versions specifically by minor versions, this is what we can see. Um, and I did a nice thing here. I added uh, the green and and red here. So red versions are vulnerable. Green ones are okayish. I mean, all of them you can do jailbreak, but you need the password for jailbreak. So it's not really a security vulnerability, right? Um, <clears throat> so and we if we dissect it by vulnerabilities, what we can see is that Chima Red is mostly fixed for most of the devices, but the big message is that all of these have been patched already, and we still see a lot of devices that are vulnerable on the internet. Now, looking at abuse by criminals of this, um, this is, um, they, they, do, they do a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So they are still installing custom binaries, even though Router S is powerful on its own. I, I mean, it has all the things you want in a router. They're installing some kernel objects or kernel modules, which is interesting, which is quite cool. They, of course, install Bash, uh, WGET, uh, Socket, and IP tables they install as well, even though it's a router with, with super powerful routing and filtering capabilities. Um, you know, they are articles like that, and they use some of the functions in Microtech to actually be able to uh, sniff your traffic, or they try to, uh, you know, create a Bitcoin miner uh, on your machine, right? Whatever you access online, it gives you this back instead of the real stuff. The only problem is that for mining to work, you need to, you know, have external scripts. But if you access those, you also get the same page. So 
it doesn't <laughs> that attack didn't really work uh, but you know they, they they're they're trying right and of course they use different different things like scheduler for example to try uh, an attack uh, one final thing I'd like to note um, is that uh, I really appreciate that they are starting hardening their systems um, this is uh, my script the code user um, it just shows all the fields in the user object uh, in, in, in the file. And what we can see is that have added two new fields, 20 and 21, that actually use um, SHA and ECC to encrypt the password. The sad part is that, of course, they cannot really re remove the password uh, from there. So they still have the password encoded in the old way as well for downgrade purposes. So I'm looking forward to the time when they, then, when they will be able to remove the old password and just leave this secure password in there. Right, that's the that's the existing password. Right, so that's everything. Tools are there. Both jailbreaks are there. There are other tools for Microtic if you want to take a look. Um, that's my research page. Uh, follow me on on Twitter if you aren't afraid. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, if there is a question or two, I'm I'm glad to answer. No mics, huh? There is a mic here if someone needs like this mic, but yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, give me this. Uh, is there any question? Hello. Uh, okay. Have there any loads or things where we can detect this attack uh, by? Uh, or monitoring things uh, on the system, or uh, then no loads on the system, load files. Uh, so your question is, can we detect the attacks? Kind of, and also, can we monitor these filters, like uh, by sending like syslog? Oh yes, uh, oh yes, yeah. It has it has a syslog interface. You can configure remote syslog on it. It has, I mean, uh, they have uh, they have first of all online demos that you can look into if you're just interested in router OS and what they provide. Yeah. They have ISO files for free. You can install on VirtualBox and yeah. test it out. So you can take a look. Uh, uh, but as for monitoring the attacks, which probably was not your question, uh, well, uh, these attacks happen uh, because of exploits in their binaries. So there's really no way to monitor them uh, directly, other than doing capture of all the traffic, right? Like, like But for example, when you access webs, uh, the web pages, yeah. uh, does it log the access like an Apache server? I don't think so. It only logs okay. when you try to log in. Yeah. <laughs> kind of sad. Yeah. Who wants? Person. Oh, nice talk. Um, how did you obtain the statistics on um, the patch uh, version of router of version 6? Um, so I used Shodan for that, and uh, how did I get the version number of those devices? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I, 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 I seriously forgot, because cause I, I, I done the stats slice two months ago. Um, so I think, uh, I think most of the services actually expose uh, the version number, right? Uh, for example, the web server, it, it just has a file. I think even the header says, like the title says, you know, version this and this. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so Shodan did it for me, basically. I just searched all different versions. There's a question there. <clears throat> and yeah, and you can... Of course, you can. Those of you who don't use Shodan so much, you can use Shodan API to get a slice directly to your console with a script. Um, you said at some point that uh, Microtik is very fast at uh, fixing issues, yes, and that they push updates automatically. Yes. But why then do we still have old versions in the world? Is it because you need a reboot no, or no, no. user interaction? They they are very fast to uh, fix issues. Uh, but uh, I, I think we must have miscommunicated because uh, they do not push updates automatically, oh. but the updates are available free of charge, and it's so easy to update, you'll just, you know, yeah, for people who, you know, know how to do it, I guess, but you just type the command and press enter, and, and it just happens, right? You don't need to download files or drag and drop. So yeah, that's probably the reason. And I think the second most important reason is that um, these devices, uh, many of these devices aren't owned by anyone, like aren't, Mm, you know, taken care of by anyone. For example, there was a guy at the conference I just was in in Dubai. Uh, he was uh, doing a talk on hacking yachts, right? The, the ships, the small ships. Um, and uh, the yacht that he hacked had a microtic device on it. And the thing is, you know, you buy a yacht, 
there's your stuff, there's a micro device. Who, who owns it, who administers it? You don't even know there's one. Vendor doesn't care. So that's the thing. Most of the devices, even, even if at home, no one really cares about them. So they didn't even know the device is there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much once again, and I'll be here the whole day. <laughs>